very uh, basis of any spiritual life throughout human history, if you were to know the individual, would be the need in the heart, the mind, the soul, the body, everything about a, a truly spiritual person. Not someone that they believe in God and they to go to church every two Sundays. I'm talking about spiritual. They're involved with God and there are hundreds of millions of them. Most of them are not known because they're your ma, they're, they're, they're somebody down the street, they're uh, three people at work that don't even know it because they're so battered and beat. They just want to see decency, goodness, kindness. And they get all spun around inside so sometimes they don't look really uh, completely with it. Like they're hurting inside and that's because they're hurting inside. Those of us who have somehow found uh, enough light in this darkened sphere to keep all of our sensory equipment together understand the basic point of what I'm attempting to present right now and that is that our one and only need, it's not personal, it's not love, our lives generally don't work. Mine certainly doesn't work. And yet all I do is good. But our need is to end all of the madness because we know it need not be, it has nothing to do with Father God. It's not necessary. And it's not difficult. My point today will be to present how it's to be done and not make it like that God has to do some big darn thing and everyone knows and there's an earthquake in the tenth part of the city and so forth. It, it, it's, a, it's an act of grace to know him, to know you, to be good. And to be good in this world is almost impossible. They're at your heels every moment. We all know what that means. There are the subtle forces, the forces of darkness, like Father Tim just said. It was just uh, with a light hardness because, uh, and a directness and a groundedness because uh, a deeply Christian fellow like my buddy Tim, or I feel my buddy Amrit the side right now, and his life looked all horrible on, on uh, in the media after he certain things happened in his life and yet he he's there with me now and through it all in the end we all get made to look like uh, street trash at some point because that's what the dark side does every single time with every spiritual life that's ever been uh, in the craziness out there and it is a bad dream um, No, if you want to be uh, truly great, we'll say like Jesus Christ, that you, you had to be in the mix. I have a buddy who's a sheriff downtown here, and, and just because he was around certain things, they uh, eviscerated him. Just be, but you have to be in the mix. My dad was a cop. I'm saying this all relates, and I'm not talking about that kind of justice, except if you're reaching for that, that's that. But if you're reaching for divine justice, which is infinitely more subtle, You'll know that what's being said right now is the deepest, the one and only core belief and knowledge and knowing and desire and need of all of us who are spiritual. This must end. It need not be. It is like they say in the Orient, an illusion, Maya, the illusion. It's, as soon as you go into deep meditation, you, you're in these rapturous conditions of thought and experience where it just, Wonderful. It's the whole idea of a first kiss of someone you love. It's just the walls collapse and you know that in that moment you feel worthy. See what I'm saying? How many of us truly feel worthy? I know I'm illumined. I never feel worthy. When someone does uh, present that to me, I'm, I'm shy, I'm shocked, I'm in disbelief, and yet we are worthy. So I'm saying just being conscious as a human being takes that sense out of you. Transcendent of that, cutting through the morass of the day-to-day, -day, the, the 
the meanness, the cold hardness of the world as it is, which is a conscious beast, the devil. Um, once you step beyond that, it's, it's, you're not worrying about worthy or anything else because it's infinitely ecstatic, wonderful. There are literally no human ways of expressing it. Although today in deep meditation will present uh, those states of awareness and experience them together. But they really, there are no words for the dignity and wonder of God in you through you, of you. All this disappears. It ends. Not just individually, but collectively, <laughs> we'll say. It ends at some point, right? And I'm speaking to all of us who are spiritual. This isn't a, uh, a movement. It's a wonder to know God. It's a wonder to know you. There's nothing wrong with us. We're not our physical body. We're not our problems. We're not the solution to our problems. In other words, we're not all these subtle factions and forces that work in our psyche to make us Robert Rosenberg, Tim, Greg, Rob. We're not a physical being. Those of us who are here are here of our own spiritual volition and to God we are God's heroes. We're here to end it all. Because we're strong enough to communicate this message. It's a message, message of kindness. And we have a badge like Tim, Sheriff of the eternal law of righteousness, joy, wonder, truth, godliness, decency, uprightness, consideration, all these delicate virtues that we meet in prayer, in an act of contrition. And our whole life is one act of contrition. We're here for our brothers and sisters, our parents, our children. Our pets. We feel for them. We want to see no harm done unto them. And we're always concerned about their well-being. And that concern is that first touch where the world meets your divinity. You need not be concerned. Once we take this step together into godliness. In other words, it doesn't matter to me that this one or that one is healed and individually becomes illuminated. Yet the point, illumined, the point is that the whole thing has to end. And when it ends, there's no physicality, no material world anymore, as there's never been in my consciousness. And I have many friends who are fully spiritual. I've discussed it in these talks. And, and we're not here. We've never been here. Although I've just discussed the psychology of our seeming to be here, we know that it is the illusion and that there is infinite, an infinite untold region in our psyche called God. There's a say region because it, it's, it graduates to something deeper and bigger and more grand and more wondrous. Uh, I didn't read this anywhere. I'm trying to find words for my personal experience as I wish to God you find words for your personal experience and figure them out daily and uh, arrive at the same conclusion in the same manner that many have. From the beginning of this talk till now, the idea is that within us, the basic need is that everyone understand, you, you don't need to be here. This doesn't need to be. This is creepy. It's not that 
it's not about this condition or that condition that could be improved in the world. The world, the idea of a body or time or life and death or consideration about anything, these human concepts do not occur in an otherwise unending Godscape that the universe is. It's a person. The universe is the person of God. The words like kindness, but it's infinite kindness. So if you could extrapolate that out in your consciousness, it's such a delicate sense. And it pervades eternity. And only in this infinitesimal particle of dust of nothingness, this worldly consciousness, does all the insanity occur and it's not that it's insane where it could be fixed or it's a problem it it does not exist so I want to make the point clearly today as with your sheriff's badge on that you're going to end it because I will give you the power to end it you have the same badge as father Tim there has to be justice. And I'm tired of all of us turning ourselves inside out to get there. And I know for those of us who are truly deeply spiritual, no more need be said, right? This has to end. It's the only reason we're here. And this time around, you will fulfill your spiritual mission. This time around, for the first time in eternity, in this realm, which is a nothingness, you can wear that badge proudly and no longer defensively. You look at the dark force, the devil, through these eyes. Justice will be done. I'm trying to find a way to present these sentiments in the human kind-hearted sense without saying that yes beyond it you see what I'm saying it can be prevented in a very powerful way but it's my personal wish that you just understand what's said without me or whatever having to present the uh, the real capabilities in terms of the human experience, which is nothingness. People get thrilled with the idea in the, in the apocalypse of the power of God. It's, it's, God is something precious. He's your child walking hand in hand with her girlfriend, whoever, whatever wherever of that sentiment that there be peace on earth goodwill everywhere but there is no no earth even the idea of peace it's the quality of divine peace is wondrous and when you know you have the power of God with you you'll uh, transcend all thought and experience all time all planes of being and there are many involved with this world that is the illusion I remember walking when I was seven years old in South Philadelphia on Johnson Street and and all the clouds were after a rain were folding in and out with powerful sunlight and I was walking along and the world wasn't there and I 
felt this every day of my life. And, I, and then I look around at Johnson Street and the gardens and the, the battered trees and the, the lonely cat and the old Buicks <laughs> and Fords and it's, uh, none of it made sense. All I felt was this openness to eternity as I feel now and have all this time here. And, but all these years of watching the degradation, the wholesale trading of souls, you know what I'm saying. Does it matter whether they call it human trafficking or someone yelling at someone else? I remember coming home from Vietnam and I was walking down 7th Street, as I did for a year, just floating because you have to see so much horribleness here and you're back in a land where you don't have to reach for your weapon and there aren't decaying bodies around you. It's um, just a, a piece you can't describe. You're just floating. And, and then there's a peanut store where they had these roasting machines and the couple that owned it were arguing over 10 cents about something and yelling and the, the whole street was peace and God and wonder and and they're yelling at each other over 10 cents or so. It was like, it was so strange, but that's the sense that we all have when we see people arguing, uh, then the real gross stuff that like Father Tim would see in his work. Um, it need not be. The point today is in your deep contemplation and prayer, you study the scripture or just talk to God about it. Uh, Ask to learn as quickly as possible what's being spoken today, what it is, the idea that all the madness can cease. It's the only thought I have ever had. More than breathing or anything. It's always with me. And all of us who are spiritual have this sense in us, this, this can't be, it's, it's numbing to our sound senses. And that's why in India they came up with the term Maya. It's really madness, or it's madness, it's illusion, it's... If you don't believe in any of it, it disappears. But I don't believe in any of it for everyone that's decent in the world. So I know I'm going nowhere. Till the streets are cleaned. And paved with gold. As they are in our Heavenly Father's home. And our Heavenly Father's home is your heart, is your soul, is your desire, your mind, your beingness, your truth, your power. You have power over all the worlds. I'm asking you to employ it, to comprehend it, to use it, to dismantle all the thoughts, all the feelings, all the negations of joy and wonder and peace that occur in this world system, as it were. Because everything of God is otherworldly. It's unconditioned. Everything of God is uncreated. Everything of God is uncreated. Everything of God has never been in this world. God didn't create the trees or the flowers or the sidewalks or anything. He meets us somehow midway, us who are seemingly incarnate. I know I'm not. I know I'm not this thing. I, oh boy, do I know that. Oh my God. You're not this thing. You're the very heart and soul of eternity. And if you look for the center of the universe, you have a spiritual consciousness, it's, it's your heart. There are no separate beings or places or times or circumstances, it's indescribable. It's been called cosmic consciousness, the Richard Buck book, <laughs> and a thousand other beautiful words. The path le le less taken 
read Thoreau's books where he would walk and take these long walks in the, in the woods, if I certainly done in my life when I could, even in horrible circumstances, that nature always meets you in a wonderful way. And in your own life, if you find yourself out of the trenches, God will find a way to delicately put you back in. Ghost, send down the, excuse me, <coughs> come Holy Ghost, send down those beams that sweetly flow in silent streams. Thank you. It's just something wonderful and beautiful. Someone talked me into getting that thing and I, oh, I didn't want it, but they said it would help their program because I'm near it, so I did that knowing it wouldn't work well. <laughs> so I have a cough. I'm apologizing for that. But I always know what will or not work well. And I do things for people every day of my life that are unnecessary, that are irrelevant. Yes, all spiritual people are clairvoyant. We know exactly what's going to occur or not. About everything, on every level. Understand the point taken? It's, we always know everything, don't you? I'm saying wipe away the tears, the smudges on your lenses. You see what I'm saying? Clarify the butter like that. Uh, called ghee in India. G-H-E-E. -E, it's, it's, uh, I guess they somehow heat it and get the fat off it. It's beautiful butter. So clarify your senses. It's called clarified butter, right? The sense of the divine is uh, if you had a little bumblebee that just stepped in some an overspilled jar of honey and just touched it with her foot that much of God is uh, of the sense I'm talking about today of illumination is enough to illumine a trillion universes because everything of God is one experience it's one you, it's one me, it's one him. And the words mean nothing. The experience is transcendent. Eternal. It's up to us to judge the world. God has given us that ability. And the more contrite we are with it, and the more we bleed for our friends. My dear friend couldn't come here today, and she had to take care of her two pets, and her own health, and, and the enormous heat wave here in California. And so all these things got in the way, and uh, and I knew if my wish were followed, and it will be soon, that this world wouldn't be anymore, then great spiritual souls like that wouldn't be caught in all these traps, all the illness. That's why we want to end the world. That's the only thing that's going to help your mom and mine and whoever. This need not be. This is the original causal factor, thinking you are a body and a place and a time and a world. It, it never was. So if you can transcend that in your own awareness and then realize you have the very power of God, then we can end the whole thing. It'll be over in a flash, in a moment. It's up to you to judge the world. I give you that. Thank you for listening. Thank you very much.